Thank you, Gennady. Um, not to be happy to give you the opportunity to talk in such a prestigious place. Um, and the plan for today is indeed to uh, talk about a new model and uh, a new model of strong linear axis. And uh, I want to acknowledge immediately that, first of all, it's always very dangerous to talk about new models because. So uh, this is where you find out that it's a zone already. <laughs> <laughs> and how it can also uh, raise new questions. So any time in the talk, if you start to disagree with this consideration, please feel free to interrupt. This is a work which has been done with my former collaborator, well, my collaborator when I was in the school, so when I was a student, and uh, also she was in Princeton, I was in Oxford. And uh, yeah, I'm part of this. Uh, Okay, so motivation. So the main question I'm interested in is what is the long time asymptotics of a highly excited initial state in a large but finite quantum system? So um, basically, well, if you look at the uh, day to day experience, imagining that you are a uh, quantum. Uh, you expect stabilization or relaxation towards a equilibrium. But this scenario, which is a common scenario, has been dramatically in question, especially by experiments. So I'm, I'm showing here two examples. So on the left, you can see this is a quantum analog of uh, Newton's paddle. And basically, the idea was that uh, the atom of uh, Einstein condensates were put in a superposition of left moving and drive in states. And basically, the idea is that uh, if you let the uh, time flow, uh, this is <laughs> so uh, when you let the time flow, basically, the uh, the cloud of atom will keep oscillating uh, beyond expect some naive estimate of thermalization time. And even if the system was, well, maybe slightly perturbed, there was still some strong remnant, uh, strong memory of the integrable character uh, when you uh, neglect the public attention. And I wanted to show you also some more recent experiments, which also. Uh, tells something I think interesting, which is that, uh, so you have uh, another cold gas, so now it's a dipolar of the gas, and here basically they look at some quantity R, which is related to the compressibility of the gas, and they want to see how it relaxes to equilibrium and the equilibrium value, so you look at the blue symbol, sorry, and the equilibrium value, equilibrium value is four, and so what you can see is that indeed it relaxes towards this equilibrium value with experimental accuracy, but it does that in the regime where the energy density is constant. So we are in a, what we usually call long time asymptotics because basically the total energy has reached the equilibrium value, but the, the system still relaxes by increasing its entropy to the final state. So that's sort of, again, quite impressive to see that this can be explored even in experiments now. Sorry. Yeah. Can I ask a question? Here we go. Is, is that paper about the non thermal fixed point? This one? Yes. So uh, I'm not sure if they I mean, this is a dry, dry, dry driven system. 
and they are doing also some uh, titles. So maybe this is something. This was not the aspect I was uh, raising. Okay. Yes, on, but yeah, I'm happy to talk about it. Um, so, and when we talk about terminalization, of course, there is a very classical example, which is the numerical experiment by Anika uh, Farwan and Singh. So, uh, the motivation was that if you take a linear chain, so this is this part, um, this is an integrable system, so you cannot expect any um, diversity, hence, nothing close to generalization, but if you add some non-linearity, small non-linearity, so alpha is a small parameter, H1 make the Hamilton non intuitable The motivation was that if you add this small motivation to the integrable Hamilton, then this would terminalize. And uh, the, so, I guess the outcome become famous. One, first, because uh, this was not, uh, this did not follow the uh, prediction. So uh, they, uh, so here this is the parameter of the numerics, and they decided to excite on one fully mode. And basically, after a time, which is again uh, reasonably short, they could see that the system would come very, very close to the initial states, which uh, was explained by, uh, which is called reference. And so they, instead of uh, the predicted equipartition of energy, they could see reference. So there was fear of breaking of nervousness. And I guess that the second reason why this problem became famous is that this was later explained by Pascal and collaborator that uh, in the long, uh, in the large size of the chain regime, you can map this equation to a uh, PDE, which was shown to be triple, and in this case, it started. Uh, I mean, this is one of the starting events for the study of soliton and typical PDEs. I want to mention that for some who have a uh, background more in a um, dynamical system, there was also uh, studying this problem, trying to understand you know, the phase space region and the stable, measuring the area of stable phase space region. And uh, there was also a threshold in alpha and uh, in the energy to um, distinguish between terminalizing regime and non terminalizing regime. And this was done by uh, Chirikov and now it's called the resonance of polar criteria. So um, this is actually uh, also relevant in the slightly less uh, expected domain, which is uh, cosmology. So um, I'm not an expert there, so I will try to share my understanding. Um, uh, so basically, the idea is that after Big Bang, the common theory of cosmology is that uh, space time uh, was inflated a lot and cooling down, but this inflation was not, uh, is not um, accurate to describe the, the matter density and how matter, as we know it, has been created. And so that's why cosmologists introduced a reheating uh, scenario uh, in the 90s. Basically, it was a scalar field, uh, which was responsible for the inflation. And this scalar field will relax to uh, its minimum and start to oscillate. And then there was some nonlinear phenomena to actually uh, uh, create new matter. Uh, to, to, sorry, to create new bosons and to create the matter as we know it. And this is uh, this scenario. When this scenario was, uh, was um, proposed, the new boson field, which was responsible for matter creation, was supposed to be classical in the sense that the quantum modes were having very high number of equations. And uh, for this reason, there has been um, from this time and also following up, some uh, study of terminalization in purely classical field theory. So that's exactly in the, in the region where I am, uh, in the landscape where I want to go. Well, and so I'm repeating the question, which is a long time asymptotic in a highly exciting initial states in a large but finite system. So you can see already I drop a word, quantum. Because, uh, well, for today, I will not be able to talk about the quantum situation. 
But um, hopefully I can convince you that there is already some interesting question at the classical level. So um, the common wisdom uh, to tackle this difficult question is uh, on the physical approach, when you look using physical tools, you uh, use genetic theory, you want the Lange theorem, and for large, for the evolution of a large scale, uh, you want to introduce some hydrodynamical description. Uh, if you want to have a more rigorous approach, um, the only result I am aware of, uh, the rigorous result, when the uh, statistical mechanic description agrees with the long time dynamics, is the case when uh, you describe a Lorentz gas and basically you can map your problem into one body system. And this was proved by SNI uh, to um, show that there is an agreement in the long time as hypothesis and the successful mechanical application. So uh, I want to maybe uh, precise, make the question more precise for today. So what I mean by terminalization is uh, energy repartition, different degrees of freedom. And uh, I say that it's um, related to uh, ergodicity. I will not make the relation very explicit, but let's say that terminalization for today is uh, achieved when we have some ergodicity in the long time dynamics. Okay, Please I apologize for ignorance. What is H? Uh, well, so uh, H theorem is basically the theorem which is telling you. Okay, so just a very heuristically, this is yeah. which is telling you that uh, the system will evolve to make this essential. So that's so you, you start with the kinet a kinetic theory and then build the function of the super entropy and then you show that the central which can always increase in some. So uh, generalization does not uh, happen in this sense, does not happen all the time. And uh, one uh, very easy way to break terminalization is integrability. An integral system does not terminalize in the sense that it's not ergodic. And I will make it slightly more precise um, in the next slide. There has been some work in the physics community also that putting disorder in the many body quantum system can also hinder or uh, dramatically slow terminalization. So this is called many body localization. And more recently as well, there's been some model when quantum models, when basically by choosing some initial states, I would say in a non-generic part of the phase space, you can have some um, uh, non-terminalized uh, outcome or long time asymptotics will not agree with what you expect from classical um, mechanics. You consider the system cut off the sun reservoir or something? So, uh, so yeah, I forgot to say it's an isolated system. Hmm? Isolated system. So if it's isolated, that means it can be a you start with a superposition. So it's not an idle state. Right. right. But if there are no transitions between the states, if you're not time dependent on the terminal. No. And how can there be a change in the distribution of things? Change the phase. Mm -hmm. uh, right. So, uh, the, the, I think what you are uh, asking is related to how to prob thermalization. And if I restrict myself to the mm -hmm. local prob in the large, um, in the large system, then the initial state will sort of always uh, evolve such that. In the long time asymptotics, looks like thermal. The, the many body states looks like yeah. thermal. So I look at the local problem. So the distribution over the energy states will stay the same. Yeah, the energy states, the energy states. So, in, in so I will show you some observable. I will show you some observable. Um, but this is, the, I think your question is related also to the, to the, to the paper by. Um, Marcus Mark Rigol, Marcus Rigol, so he said that, yeah, distribution of uh, the, the overlap coefficient with the, between the initial state and the ideal state never changed. They are not only this time independent, but you have all these spaces also. Making dynamics and fault, the local problem, then you can have some things out of this. I mean, another way to, to answer your question is that 
the, the, the normal um, construction of a canonical ensemble is that you take a large system and you divide it in the system and the environment. So I think my question for today is also to say, if I now want to make this construction a large but finite system, how large needs the, does the environment need to be to, for my system to feel like uh, connected to a reservoir? If that makes sense. So, sorry, no, I'm confused actually. This was referring to the quantums? No, I, 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 I was just saying. Okay, because otherwise, I don't have like in state. Uh -huh. Well, so eigenstates make sense to me in a linear system. I can see so the quantum. But, you know, I guess maybe if I can try to code some. Uh... <laughs> Like observable and what might be in the particular model. Hopefully, this will help us. Yeah, question. Um, okay. So, okay. So, I said that tonalization is related to ergodicity, and uh, I guess I need to define what ergodicity is. So, uh, again, uh, I was I will always consider a Hamiltonian, which is time independent, and uh, as is a classical system, this is just. The function, which is defined on a two D dimensional phase space, and uh, the equation of motions defined in the Hamiltonian flow are the standard one, uh, relating the canonical variable x and p. So I am assuming there is x is right here, and uh, I'm talking about an observable uh, f of x and p, which is a smooth function in the phase space. And then I'm saying that there will be channelization in this sense for the classical system that uh, the Hamiltonian flow is ergodic is for almost all initial condition and for an observable time average is equal to the ensemble average. So that's my definition of classical channelization in the sense of ergodicity. I'm not saying that. And I want to already emphasize that, uh, of course, when we say that. Uh, in integrable system, you could have such a relation, but then the invariant measure mu would be very particular because for a given energy, you could have several um, invariant sets responding to different choice of tori. So here, I want to stress that my invariant measure is supposed to be on a constant energy surface, and I'm also implying that this constant energy surface is typically of dimension, but well, not typically, is of dimension 2d minus 1. So I want to exclude uh, that sort of my, uh, I want to include the ergodicity on, on Torides. So, more. Okay, so how to get ergodicity? Well, uh, as I said, during uh, the past time, I'm the single, the <clears throat> All the idea was to take an uh, integrable Hamiltonian, perturb it with a small parameter epsilon, and uh, hoping for uh, getting ergodicity. Well, the thing is that, well, in the case of 30 percent time, it did not work, but actually there has been some much more general results. To me, one of the most fascinating of the 20th century, which is that uh, if you perturb an integrable system for small enough perturbation parameter, integrable tori, which are foliating phase space, will survive under some condition, the resonance associated to them. And this is the famous KAM theorem. So if you want to, if you perturb, the message is that if you perturb integral Hamiltonian, at least in a close neighborhood of it, it will still not share the visit. But there is another route for ericity, and this is a game I would like to invite you today, which is uh, dynamical billiards. So the idea is the following. You take a domain, so here this is the interior of the ellipse, and you start with a, part, with a certain initial point and a direction. It's P0 is my point, the direction of the velocity is there, and uh, let's say the, the velocity is one, because actually it doesn't matter, and the dynamics is the following. So the trajectory of the particle is following a straight line, Till it hits the boundary of the domain. And then you do specular reflection, like ray in optics, 
meaning that the incidence angle is equal to the outgoing angle. So after reflection, you go following another straight line. And you can continue this game, and then you are propagating inside your videos. So from this construction, it is hopefully quite clear that the trajectory can be uniquely determined by the impact points, the list of impact points. And those points can be uniquely determined as well by set, by the convenient set of coordinates, which is first the abscissa, the curvilinear abscissa of the points along the boundary. So this is my origin of the abscissa and it goes all the way down till the full perimeter. And the second coordinate is the angle. I chose here the angle between the outgoing direction and the tangential direction at the impact point. And if I give you the unit sequence S1, C1, S2, C2, etc. You can construct in a new way the trajectory uh, of the initial data. And actually, this is something which has been um, uh, heavily used in the study of the arts for the Poincare surface section. So uh, if you plot Sn as a function of the cost of, this, of the angle, you have a pair of canonically conjugate variables, and this is a very powerful tool to assess the integrability of the dynamics in the sense that if the Poincaré surface of section display curve for uh, your initial condition, then it's a strong hint that you have integrability. Whereas in the presence of chaos uh, or even erodicity, you will have with erodicity, you will have uh, a cloud of points. Show you some examples. Now, the question is why are those videos interesting? For the following reason is that you can reach ergodicity and more generally, you can reach broad range of dynamics by changing the shapes of the videos. So, the shape, the shape of the choice of the domain D and the shape of this boundary matters a lot. And uh, I'm giving you here some examples. So uh, there are very few particular shapes which are, which are integrable. So the edits, the rectangle, and a few triangles. There is some um, what I would call intermediate class, which contains all the rational polygon and uh, also some um, more exotic problem in Yaroscatra. And then there are some shapes when the dynamics, the classical dynamics, the ray dynamics, is chaotic, and uh, so it's ergodic actually, but it's also hyperbolic. And uh, two classical examples are the Sinai videos when you put a circular disk obstacle inside the square, or the Unimovich Stadium when you glue two half disks to the smaller side of the rectangle. So here I'm showing some point of surface of section. This is for an integrable situation. This is for uh, a stadium video chaos situation. So in the integrable case, well, for example, for the ellipse, you have two types of, of uh, trajectories. There are trajectories which are crossing the segment between the two foci of the ellipse. They are called the bouncing ball modes, and they give rise to these uh, curves in the point of surface section. And there are trajectories which are concentrating along some annulus following the boundary, and there are all the whispering gallery modes, and this are the other curves in the point um, of as a section. Whereas here, this is just one trajectory. I think I had 10,000 or 20,000 points for one initial condition. And what you can see is that the impact points. Uh, of the trajectory start to fill the domain in a dense uniform manner. Uh, there is there seems to be some forbidden region here, and the fact that for the stadium media art, you have a very special set of initial condition for trajectory <laughs> bouncing up and down like this. They are marginally stable, but this is the set of metric zero in the whole cell of the comparison of section. So what that means is that the Understood many decades ago. It means that we're going to be, it is a COVID and it is like a COVID. In, in time, the invention that would go away for a very long time. That's the, that's the reason. Mm -hmm. 
Well, uh, you mean from the time because you can the big average for a strap for a long time, then you get the balancing board, but eventually it will yeah. take you, much longer. If you take the actual limit of large time, then uh, the sticking will not be visible. That's right. Thanks. Sorry? Yes. Can you explain again uh, if the, the difference between weakly and strongly? Okay. Yes. Sir. So, um, well, this is an okay. There are mathematical definition, but basically, uh, weakly ergodic here means that uh, you have zero government exponent, but there is still some idea of ergodicity in the sense that I, I, I told you before that if you launch trajectories, the generic trajectory, then you will uh, agree with the uh, the trajectories, trajectories separate more slowly than exponential, but still they eventually come. And, uh, and and in, at least in those shapes, the development is going to be zero. It's a higher degree in the chaos part. Okay. Uh, so this was ergodicity for small you know, dimension of the phase space. For large dimension of the phase space, I would say this is quite uh, an active research area in the AM theory. Uh, but the interest in physics is clear because, uh, well, if you want to do statistical mechanics, and this is master. Workshop, uh, we do need to be uh, at least for the microscopic dynamics, with very large uh, dimensional phase space. So, a meter of air in this room, which contains 10 to the plus 10 to 3 particles. And uh, the idea, uh, when found in statistical mechanics centuries ago, was to assume an ergodic principle, which means that the typical trajectory of the physical system is ergodic. And this goes back to your remark that the ergodicity should be probably not assumed for the full dynamics in the very large phase space, but mainly um, this ergodicity should now be restricted to observables which are a uh, local probe in the system. And I think actually that, uh, and I'm happy to have comments about it, but I think this already makes the mathematical formulation of ergodicity much more difficult when you are restricting your set of observables. Okay, so um, um, what, what do I want to do to say today? I want to consider classical nonlinear chain with n side, and I want to understand whether it's terminalized in the sense that whether it is ergodic or not. And I want to understand whether it can fail that terminalization. So this is uh, the model I want to introduce is uh, containing really art condition. So uh, I told you that billiards are very uh, efficient tool to have ergodicity or even strong chaos in the small dimensional phase space. When putting them in the chain, this has been done some time ago, at least in these two examples, these forming to have earlier references. Uh, this was introduced, actually, my understanding is it was, it was introduced after the paradox raised by Fermi, Pasta, and Mulan. Uh, people start to say, okay, but can we actually build some chain which are uh, ergodic and not showing references as the Fermi, Pasta, and Ulam uh, problem? And so there was the first model called the Dingling model, which was a chain of harmonic oscillator with hard core. And they checked terminalization not via ergodicity, but looking at the Fourier law, which is uh, basically you connect each end of the chain with thermostats different temperature and you look at the transport of heat along the chain and the test is to see whether the thermal conductivity is independent on the size of the chain that's uh, how you check we go in the system um, and then there was a similar model introduced later they call ding dong model and uh, again they um, use that with such a billiard condition, so here basically the distance between the two uh, position of the chain should be bounded from below, uh, then they can also uh, recover for the in that case. So this is the model I want to introduce. So uh, this looks uh, reason naive. So you take an Hamiltonian, which is exactly the free Hamiltonian. <laughs> So you have kinetic energy, uh, uh, which is the standard quadratic expression uh, with the momentum, which is the quadratic function of the momentum. 
then you have a quadratic interaction between two sides. And at each side, I assign and put a position vector, which I take small n dimension. So I have capital N for the number of sides in my chain. And I have small n for the um, dimension of my position vector. And the twist that we introduced is that we impose a VDR condition on this position vector at each side. So what does it mean? It means that each position vector has to be has to be located inside the domain D, which is chosen in advance. D is fixed once, so one part of the part of the definition of the model. Its certain domain is Rn. And then, if we want to have VDR dynamics, we need to we need to implement the specular reflections. And what does that mean? It means that if there is position vector at one site which reach the boundary of the domain, you perform you need to perform a specular reflection in the sense that the uh, normal component of the position vector has its signs reversed, and the tangential component is conserved. Uh, so this is an example. Again, this is my Hamiltonian. Each position vector is restricted inside the DDR of domain D. And the simplest instance would be that I take um, the position vector to be scalar, so small n is equal to 1, and I take the segment 0, 1. And basically what I have is that at each side, I have some position vector which is constrained between 0 and 1. And then uh, between each position vector constrained in the box, there is a thing of some uh, linear string um, connecting each side, each neighboring side. But you can also uh, look at a more um, at a different realization when you take for uh, the positive vector two dimensional vectors and you ask them to be confined inside a chaotic VR. And what uh, this means, for example, is that we are compute, we are devising a lattice field theory, which is chaotic at the lattice scale, because the dynamic inside the stadium is chaotic. Okay, in order to make the problem well defined, we need to uh, make a uh, boundary condition for the chain. Uh, and uh, we took in the numerics um, parity boundary condition, but in the large size of the chain, in the regime of the large size, we should not pass. Um, I want to bring another motivation for the model. I think that this model can be important uh, from the statistical field theory point of view, because when you look at some field theory, uh, the critical properties of the field theory are usually heavily controlled by the symmetry, symmetry constraint on the field. So for example, you take the scalar field, which has a set to symmetry, and it's supposed to be the Ising, uh, the class, the universality class of the Ising model. For us, this is just about to take the segment between minus one and one for the field at each, for the box, um, uh, constraining the field at each side. If you want to recover the O2 symmetry, well, you take uh, a vector position which has a two dimensional vector, and you ask it to be constrained along the unit circle. You have the x1, the O2. If you recover, if you want to look at the ON symmetry, then you choose a vector position which has, sorry, the, so the capital N is not the number of sides. Sorry, I should have uh, only seen it now. Um, so this is the dimension of the, uh, so the ON symmetry will be realized by taking position vector at each side, which is dimension capital N, and you ask it to be um, restricted on the unit sphere. And I'm saying that because I think our model for uh, using all the flexibility of changing the domain can be connected to many other models. And uh, I recently, for example, discovered that, uh, well, last week, exactly, uh, that uh, Fadeyev and Zamolotikov introduced the deformation of the O3 model, which is integrable. Um, and uh, they call it the sausage model. And well, it's, I'm still reading the paper, which is a bit difficult for me because it's not my community, but 
what I think, what, what, I, what I understand now is that the sausage model is actually the ensoil of my model. So that's why the, what they call an integrable deformation is just deforming the sphere in the ellipsoid. And we all know that the ellipsoid is still an integrable box. So this is to show that I think the model can address very, very um, many uh, situations. But also, it can ask new questions. So, for example, uh, what would be the critical properties if uh, the domain is a chaotic billiard? Uh, what happens if the symmetric group of my field is a digital group? And that would mean, in my case, that the domain is a regular polygon. Or something uh, slightly more exotic, maybe, if you have some particular triangle which is related to the weak area 64 I was mentioning. Because we know that from the video perspective, uh, the dynamics is different, the correlation, uh, the time, for the, the two point correlation between the position in the video will not decay exponentially um, as uh, the long time limit. So I think that this model really could open, well, hopefully, could open a um, new perspective at least. I think it brings some sort of a geometrical view on several field theory models. But it's also hopefully can uh, raise new questions. Okay, so uh, some um, I think I'm getting a bit too slow. Um, so some features about the model. So if I write the linear equations, they look absolutely elementary because my Hamiltonian is quadratic. So the linear equation is just to solve uh, the equation of motions of the linear equation. But you have this constraint, and that whenever the position vector is hitting the boundary of the domain, then you need to perform um, a specular reflection. So I want to emphasize that this model is still different and specific in the sense that it is not perturbation of a linear model. So the Hamiltonian is not that analytic or smooth. This is due to the presence of the hard walls. It is not translational symmetry. Uh, if you're interested in that, uh, I could elaborate it further later. Uh, this has, of course, an importance if you want to write the hydrodynamics, for example, of this model, because the translational symmetry is usually uh, what this first Euler term in the hydrodynamic equation of the, the model. So here, you don't expect uh, translational symmetry. Uh, but it has an Hamiltonian, which is time independent, so the total energy is truly conserved. And if I call the uh, energy density E over N, I can already point to extreme situation. So if the energy density is very, very large, basically, if you go back to the Hamiltonian, you can see that due to the billiard constraints, the norm of each position vector is bounded, meaning the potential energy is bounded. So if you put a lot of energy initially, it has to go finally to the kinetic part because the potential energy cannot take part of it. So if you go to very high density energy initially, uh, you will have basically uh, something which looks like a part of, uh, different size. Each size is in the box and almost not feeling interaction. And the opposite limit is when the uh, energy density is very, very small. And then you would have some, only you look at the dynamics of the free chain, uh, which only touches, fills the wall uh, in rare occasions. Of course, in the, if you take the long time, the long time limit, uh, all those contacts will matter. So uh, I just uh, wanted to show some um, a check of ergodicity at small d, a small dimension of the phase space. So I took a scalar position vector, and the domain is just the box zero one. And I took two particles, so this is the Hamiltonian. And I look at the point character surface of section I uh, introduced earlier. So I would suggest to first, so this is for different energy density. So for law of energy density, you have almost a horizontal line, which is expected for if you had particle which is not interacting with another particle. So the 1 dB out shows exactly this horizontal line on the of subsection. But if you decrease the energy and the interaction becomes more significant, then you can see that you will have a, a large larger region of phase space, which will be occupied by uh, ergodic trajectories. So, so, so each 
You've got two particles. So you're plotting for out of two points. What? Uh, so the point of the subsection is P1 and X1. So each of the two particles, you've got two, each particle has its has its X and its P. That's right. Right. And uh, here you're plotting the X for one of the two particles, it doesn't matter which one. So we were plotting two points at each time. At each instant, we've got two particles, each of the X. No, I'm plotting one point. I mean, it depends which section I'm. I'm uh, so the phase space is four dimension. Yes. The conservation of energy reduce the energy, constant energy to three dimension. And then I'm free to take uh, some section. No, but, you, but this is for one particle. That's right. And it could be either of the two. Is yeah. So you can just look at it. one of the particles over time. And we're you assuming see. that the other one does something similar. That's right. Yes. I mean, could this could, is could it happen if you've got more particles? So one of them does something different from all the other. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So then the picture isn't, isn't enough to. No, but in general, the quantum surface abstraction is only relevant for low dimension phase space anyway. So, um, yeah. But, yeah. I, I can show examples. Um, okay, so now the question. I mean, does the system terminalize? And actually, there are two routes to answer these questions, which makes the problem, I would say, even more interesting. So I can use the first route, which is basically the thumb passed out of route, single, uh, which is that you take a uh, lattice of n sides with r walls and you take the limit of large chain, or you already assume that you have a continuous field, but you need to smooth the walls first to make it, well, at least, in my opinion, to make it well defined, and then you can take some hard wall limit. And what is already interesting is that uh, the, the answers seems, uh, the two answers, two roots seem contradict. Okay, so if you take root, uh, the first group, so you have uh, how to check terminalization. Well, I'm, I'm still looking for a, a proper draw of terminalization or even herbalicity. So what we did is that we asked for a much more, much stronger property, which was hyperbolicity, implies hyperbolicity. So basically, we look at the whole Yapunov spectrum as a measure of chaos, and also as a heredicity, for different size of the chain. So these are the different symbols. And the three plots are for different energy density. So this is a small h is 0, 1, small h is equal 1, small h is equal 10. H will define uh, here the, just the energy density, the energy, the mean energy of part. And so what we saw is that for reasonably long trajectory, we always notice that the smallest level of exponent is positive. Okay, so uh, I'm discarding the fact that I'm in Hamiltonian system, so the level of exponents is always coming to the level of exponents coming to pair. You have a positive part of the spectrum in the mu or negative part. So I'm only showing the positive part, of course, but the smallest positive level of exponent numerically was shown to be positive. Which means that for, for this trajectory, this set of trajectory, we have, well, hyperbolicity hence hyperbolicity. You mean probably not zero? It is non zero. Uh, so if it is ergodic, then we can ask, okay, so what is the prediction from statistical mechanics? Well, uh, and especially whether we can check energy equal partition. So I write the partition function and I introduce uh, neighbor temperature beta as a parameter so far. So this is the equation for the partition function. And as usual, the integral of momenta is trivial, but what is uh, containing all the information is the integral of the position. And uh, it is convenient in our case to rewrite the multidimensional integral of the position as trace of transfer operator, because in the large n limits, all the information will be contained in the largest eigenvalue transfer operator. It appears that uh, for the billiard, for the for this uh, domain, and actually it's generalized to uh, easily to arbitrary d, 
the transfer operator is defined by the, by the rather looking, simple looking uh, integral equation, um, which we have to solve. And basically, if we understand the property of the largest eigenvalue of this uh, well defined operator, I mean, uh, bounded and compact, I think, uh, then we have the, we can build the thermodynamics for our system. And this, this was already enough for us to check that the, uh, there is indeed the energy every particle for our thing, in the sense that the average energy, so the statistical, the canonical uh, average energy over the number of sites equals to the numbers of quadratic freedom uh, times T. So there are only one, there is only one quadratic freedom in large temperature regime, there are two. The small temperature. So, um, another check of terminalization was to introduce the two point correlation functions, something which is very common in physics. So, basically, the idea is that you want to look at the average of this product, the position vector at one side, the position vector at the side at the distance of it, and you take the kinetic parts, so that's why you subtract this average, and you average over all the sides you're looking at. So, this is called the two point correlation function. And basically, the idea is that this quantity is relevant because you can compute the averages in two ways, either time average or uh, canonical average, statistical events. This is what I'm showing here. So please discard the red curve, I think, just if you need it. But hopefully you can see that in those lines here, there is a dashed black line, which is the uh, statistical mechanics canonical prediction. Then there are three lines, which are the time average for drawing sequence chain. So when the size of the chain is increasing from green to blue, it comes closer to the uh, prediction of the um, statistical mechanics. So in that sense, we have ergodicity. And so this is hopefully maybe making more sense to your question before, like what would we uh, compute for classical Thermalization, uh, well, if you check the class thermalization, well, this is, this is one example. So, uh, actually, we can go a bit further because the transfer operator, the transfer operator, the integral equation I was writing in the previous slide uh, has been also related to some diffraction problem. And there's been a more refined approximation for its eigenvalue, which gives us the um, critical exponents for the divergence of the correlation length which is here minus one, which again, so this critical exponent plus the one here, which is t to the power one, t to the power one, basically this uh, ensures that our models is in the class of the Ising model, which is so now it's like that. Uh, so I'm doing some, uh, here I wanted to show that there is a difference between also the some initial states. If we choose an initial state when only one side is excited, we have different outcome, whether the box is one dimensional and integrable or is two dimensional and chaotic. So, unfortunately, I would like to move to something which is maybe more relevant to the uh, audience. So, I was telling you that there, is, there are two routes to study the terminalization of the model. So, the first route was to take chain and send the number of sites to infinity. Second is to take, uh, to smooth the walls and try to achieve continuous description. This is what I'm doing now. So I'm introducing this Hamiltonian, which is the same as before, but now the position vector, well, the position at each site is unrestricted, but instead there is a local potential which actually does the job of restricting it with uh, if the parameter alpha is sent to infinity. So this is really trapping the, part, the, the particles uh, between zero and one, but in a smooth way. And indeed now, the Hamiltonian is analytic, so when we use some uh, uh, perturbations here, for example. Uh, and then I'm taking the continuous limit in a sense that I want to send the number of sides to infinity while keeping the size of the chain fixed. And instead of having a position vector at site i, I have the value of the field at this position. And what I claim is that 
even if the chain was shown to be ergodic in the large end limits, this field theory is integrable for arbitrary alpha, but for arbitrary finite alpha. Why is this so? Well, if I rewrite my field theory in the Lagrangian form instead of the Hamiltonian form, this is the, uh, the standard Lagrangian. And if I write the field equation, so the Euler Lagrange equation, I got this PDE. And this PDE basically is integrable because if I remap, if I rescale time and position and the field, I ended up with such seems order, which is going to be integrable. So uh, it is known to be integrable. There has been also some more recent work to explain, describe the terminalization of this field theory using this new tool called generalized hydrodynamics. So for me, clearly, one motivation would be to uh, follow this uh, uh, study, but keeping my alpha and push my alpha to infinity to see uh, how this uh, uh, formalism uh, survives. I mean, you put this model with a number of interacting particles in the field, but if you have a single particle in a 2D field and you soften it, are you saying that then that will never, be, even if the shape of it is a stadium or something, that will not be chaotic if you, uh, if, if you smooth the walls, a single particle? No, no, in 2D, smoothing the walls will still bring chaos. Hmm? Will still lead to chaos. Okay. But here I am 1D. My billiard is the one the box. And if I and I say that as long as my smooth my box, this is an integrable field. But many years ago, I mean talking, I asked Sina what would happen to his uh Sina Bimble if he softened the interaction cartridge, and he said it's not known. Okay. Yeah, this is a uh, that's what he usually did. Yeah, but if it was not known by Bitcoin, I've seen I thought it would go, there is a high chance that uh, people might struggle. Um, and I want to explain a bit more why it is, uh, it is actually, I claim this is <clears throat> when I have this uh, continuous field theory with smooth wall. So again, you see that as instead of having a one D box and the field is constrained between zero and one, now uh, you have a smooth box, which is uh, completely uh, integrable in, uh, in, from the BR perspective. But uh, the thing is that this field theory, I think I, I'm claiming that when you take this field theory in the large alpha limit, you get a singular limit. It's singular in the sense that this equation can be reformulated following the um, um, formalism of lax pairs. So you can write this PDE as associated with two linear problems. So you find the two-dimensional vector and you say that the time derivative is equal to the certain action of the U, sorry, the space derivative is equal to the action of the certain U, time derivative is um, coincide with the action of certain V, and uh, these are called the lax pairs. And basically your starting equation is exactly equivalent to the fact that you have this uh, condition or compatibility or non, or non or zero curvature condition under the assumption that lambda, which is the spectral parameter, is time dependent. Now, the question is okay, I have my integrable equation, I want to take the large alpha limit. Well, I'm hinting now because I'm still working on it, uh, but I, I'm confident I, I can now understand it that I'm hinting why it should be singular. You see here, there is an alpha prefactor. So if I put this prefactor here in front of the derivative, I have actually a singular limit because basically my field becomes ill defined. So what I mean is that my large alpha limit requires to take this formalism and use some WKB treatment in the same way, for example, Peter Miller has done for the sine board or sine board limit. That's what I'm trying to do. With this also um, singular limit can be also seen when you start to propagate some initial field, uh, but I will not uh, mention so think I think. So I wanted to uh, share with you uh, this new model, which looks uh, naive, but I think there is a lot to do with it. 
so this is a model which is uh, non-linear because there is this billiard condition, uh, billiard constraint. It is ergodic if you take the discrete chain perspective. It is non ergodic because it is integrable if you start smoothing the wall. But I think that it will become probably uh, non integrable if one properly take the similar limit of hard walls. <laughs> and for the future, well, I think it really raises many, many questions. So I'm, I, I'm just flashing a few here. So if you have any ways to quantify every city of chaos in such system. I'm very interested, especially how such a criterion can evolve in a large end limit. The second thing is that we know very well how to find periodic orbits in some videos. Uh, and the question which I think could be uh, related to what people do in modulation theory for integral PD to study the stability of this solution. And um, I think this is important, for example, if you want to go to the quantum version. And more specifically, I think this, this uh, model is showing that the presence of these hard walls is introducing some singular limits, which I think can be interesting also to see how it, uh, how it uh, basically uh, survives or breaks integrability. Sure. Maybe a comment. So, so you said that the 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 ergodicity optimization may may come in a different way if, if I got it right. When you take the n going to fit limit or the continuum limit, but n going to fit limit is just the thermodynamic limit, which is a bit different from the continuum limit, right? So, yeah. so you I mean not necessarily you should the priori expect the same behavior, right? Okay. I mean, intuitively, they, they, should, they could be related. They could be reasonable to expect something similar. I mean, special relation is different than the reality. You're right. Just trying to visualize actually this, this mechanical system. Uh, so, can I think of it as a thing just to that? But you're not you're not tied to, to anything. Just tied to each other, essentially yeah. connected with each other by right. And, and then they can go through to each other. Yeah. Uh, and once you get to uh, the world, you can really have such a condition in which uh, just uh, uh, is the computer how far the lights go over? Yeah, conflict with the one of them or both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I think actually, yeah, yeah. I actually I forgot to say I should have given the question, but if there is any experimental uh, experiments related to this model, I'm very happy to hear that. Like. Well, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm not so optimistic because the fact, the fact that they can go to each other, the fact that they can go to each other is somebody else. So the other picture that we start is that imagine that you have a layer, some layers of billiards. So you have a particle which is moving inside the domain. So everyone, each uh, each particle can move and basically stack them and put linear spring between them. But another realization that we okay. so, I mean, I'm very happy again if you have something even related. Uh, like vaguely related to experiments. So can I, can I follow up on that actually? How essential is it that they actually came to Um Well, I mean, okay, if you want to have something physically relevant, you start to say that so should be hardcore and everything. So the motivation, I would say, is more formal in the sense that I think it's a mathematical model. But this is the simple mathematical model which can uh, let you explore many, many different situations from integrable to non integrable. I didn't mention, but this, this model can go to higher dimension. Uh, like instead of a chain, I can think about two D lattice with one D box already. In the, so so I, for me, it's, it's a drug 
uh, basically relate and understand different field theory models. But the, the precise experimental experiment, uh, implementation, I cannot see. You have uh, different articles uh, moving around different billiards, like uh, XI in a, in a county billiard and the others in a non county billiard. Well, she, she wanted to make your life very difficult. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think the same year for everyone is already. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. So earlier uh, in the talk, you uh, talked think about defining some kind of thermal quantity by taking a long time limit. Um, but now, you sort of towards the end, you were talking about the limit as end and infinity. I'm just curious to think there might be an issue with the non commutability of the limits problem. Um, yeah, so. Um, um, I, 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 yeah, so definitely the, the, there is no, I have no strong, I, I cannot say for sure that the limit should be like strong limit part. And, uh, and I think again that in the very simple situation, when I have one chain, one box already taking a lot and giving the continuous, it's very different. Uh, so, yeah, it's something also. So I'm wondering what you conclude from this, because you have a model, it's interesting, it's a, it's a model that seems to include a number of other models, and also has problems in its own. But what do you conclude about thermalization? I mean, when can you give, is it helpful to give a general rule for when you would have thermalization, when you would not have thermalization? You show different cases. Um, well, okay, so uh, that's obviously a very, very important question. Um, first, I should say that I started to study it uh, quite recently and, I, and I'm still exploring the features of the model. So I'm afraid I, I cannot have some way broad and trying to reach that. Um, so, for the simple situation, which is the 1D chain, with a 1D box, uh, my claim is that it is ergodic. If you take every root, any root, if you take any of those two roots, you will find ergodicity and sterilization in this sort of broad sense. Um, the, because I'm, 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 uh, I'm claiming that the continuous limit is singular enough to break into mobility. So actually, the continuous fields here with hard walls will also go to thermalization. Uh, the next big step for me would be to understand how the geometry can change thermalization property. If this same situation, when I do hope for non thermalization or integrability, if this is already integrable, then the question is, if I change the geometry, I could have slow or fast thermalization in the sense that if these integrable shape, maybe I could expect slower decay of the correlation, whereas if D is a chaotic billiard, I would expect very fast thermalization. So this is more uh, the direction I, I, would, uh, I would sort of uh, identify. But yeah, any I mean, there are many questions raised. The you are in the field, you know, different types of equation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if the in the 1D, okay, in 1D chain, uh, 1D box for the, for the field, uh, and if, well, if I smooth the box, this is into, this is the uh, generalized agrodynamics. Sin problem that has been done by uh, so, for example, one question in this respect is that uh, generalized hydrodynamics is uh, describing the thermalization towards this generalized mm -hmm. ensemble. The common hydrodynamics is describing thermalization 
on the standard split ensemble. So I think that my alpha limit is I'm trying is drawing the path, drawing the bridge between the two, how to go from one situation to the other. And uh, I, I'm not so sure that it's easily done by other models. Questions? All right, then. I have another question regarding the, uh, well, some point you mentioned uh, the verifying normalization through Fourier law. I got it right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So okay. it's, um, it's a bit, but it's interesting because, uh, for example, you might have a system like FPT that would thermalize in a very long time, but it might have a, uh, a, 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 a non standard conductivity, uh, so an anomalous conduction. So, so, in which sense, can you verify normalization? You know, and, Okay, so I think that again you are raising a very very interesting point, but the uh, problem is always that terminalization can be defined in different ways. So people make and call terminalization different things. So I relate to terminalization to the the dynamics. So they say that terminalization is the fact that, that there is a standout for you, which is different. So in my case, I have no down stats, no connections, and they are connecting the end. So uh, it's all about, I, th I think your question is more about this. Okay, so can we take different definition of terminalization and see whether this is obeyed or not? Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. There's always going to be some questions. Well, of course, I want to come back to it, and I have my idea how to So that would be a good and I wanted to let you actually, because when I saw this, um, one thing I want to oh, 